In today's episode, we're talking about the single most important aspect of architecture and interior photography. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing, and you can also check out my website in the description below. So what is the single most important aspect of architecture photography? Well, forget compositional rules, forget f-stops and forget focus and the type of camera you have. If you walk into a scene like this after you've traveled a long way, like I have, there's nothing that will get you a better shot or set of shots than working the scene. I've walked into this castle. It looks like renovations are due to begin any minute now. And in this old castle, there's only one real shot that I wish to shoot, and it's this grand piano sat within this beautiful curved window. However, pianos are particularly difficult to photograph, notoriously so. You've got to get lots of things right in the camera to make that shot come alive in post. So in this episode, we're gonna be sort of walking the scene together, trial and error, playing with it, working it through to try to make sure that we can nail some shots. If you're in a rush, you capture a couple of shots and run off, it's gonna be much more difficult to obtain something that you are pleased with. There's many things that go into this and we're gonna be discussing that in today's video. So pianos like this are of course, a huge part of the type of photography it is that I capture. In fact, if I come across stuff like this, I'm usually going well out of my way to go and photograph it because I know that they make for fantastic subjects in the kind of photography that I shoot. And I haven't photographed one for a few years, so I actually thought, Right, I'm gonna go and make a mission to get to this particular one. Pianos like this though, take a very meticulous approach to be able to capture great shots. Have you ever picked up a photography book before? They always teach you the same basic stuff about how the pros do it, how they get good shots and all of this, you know? However, what they don't tell you is that good photography, honestly, takes time and lots of it. Like a lot of it. I've now captured many shots of this scene and I've taken care of each detail, each composition, each focal length, the distance between me and my subject, the framing or surrounding it. I've moved elements. I've put the lid up, the lid down. And the least important thing out of all of that was me and my settings. I locked them in, I put them down and I captured some shots. There's an easy part of this. Really, they're the easy part. I've tried portrait, I've tried landscape. I'm going back to landscape now. Now, when we walk into an architecture space, usually I'm photographing the whole architecture. The idea is you get your tripod and camera into the center of that space. But when it comes to something like a piano, you have to really think about your tripod height. How do you want the viewer to look at the end result? And the best way of doing that is to work the space, work the scene, and capture a few different versions because trust me, once you get them on the larger screen and look at them, you could either be over the moon with the results or incredibly disappointed. And if you've got bad results, you probably, like me, can't go back quickly. Compositions, many work. There's a few that work. Straight on is the obvious one for me. But I have also done a couple off to the side, off to the left. I've kicked some dust up for another one. 
I've let the light drift in for another. I've even gone off to the side and tried it shooting across it as well. But the best one, I won't know actually, until I get back to my laptop, go through them, check them, and make sure that they are what I want. Which one has the wow factor? Pianos are quite difficult to shoot, and on this one, it's leaning slightly forwards as well. So that can lead to you really having to think about your composition and like I said, work the space. It's obvious the reason why I've talked, brought you to a piano to explain about work in the scene and why it's incredibly important. It's because pianos are a single subject, but with many vantage points. And I've seen good and bad shots of this exact piano. I'm trying to play with my tripod height to make sure that the piano isn't too stretched. My tripod is kind of waist height and I'm playing around a little bit with the center column here, up and down. And as I do that, on the back of the LCD here, it's stretching or pulling in the keys of the piano. I'm gonna show you now in this camera, actually what that's doing, let me record. So as I pull up like this, you can see the piano stretches out and as we drop it, it flattens it out. And it's only a small thing, but trust me, it makes a huge difference in the final composition. So I've been in a bit locked in a position around about here, where I think it gives a nice balance between the two. I'm not losing too much of the shape of the piano, but I am showing as well the depth of it. That's quite a nice look. I'm doing ever so subtle shifts and movements with the camera. I'm constantly checking the live view and the grid lines, even just subtle movements like so, make a huge difference in the positioning and the framing. Now the other one that I'm working on, I'm working over and over, is the framing. The left and the right wall, the piano of course, is not dead center and these things are incredibly heavy. Someone's done a good job of positioning it and I like where it sits, it's looking really cool. So what I'm doing is I'm playing around with my framing, moving my camera ever so slowly. The tripod position left and right, trying to still keep the center window in the center, but ever so slightly moving my camera. So what I'm doing is soft movements like so, gentle movements in camera, both with the lens, the focal length, and the height, and just constantly shifting. I'm also just picking up and shifting the camera's position ever so slightly, left and right, left and right, just to play with that framing and balance. brings me to the end today guys hope you've enjoyed this video it's my very first from the region i'm going to be in this area for around 10 days many videos to come including some in that members area that i mentioned that i'm going to be launching hopefully next week until then bye bye for now and uh, if you've got any comments leave them below and i'll see you all really really soon take care